Welcome back, Controls Champions. I got a great thing to show you today. We've been talking about vision inspection and lighting, and this is the hot ticket. Let's get into it. Okay, so first let's talk about what I've got here. This is all Keyence branded uh, stuff. I, I convinced Keyence to let me borrow some of their demo stuff. And so shout out to Keyence. Thanks a bunch, guys. This is a dumb camera. It's not, it doesn't have the smarts in it. And then we've got a very special light here. And that's what I really want to show you today. And then the smarts are in a separate vision controller. So the thing that's special about this light, there are two different things actually. One piece that I'm going to talk about today is that it can shine light from different directions take pictures of all those different directions and then do different things with it based on that. So we've talked about using side lighting to try and highlight uh, textures, embossed features, things like that. This can do that in a way that's more programmatic rather than having to set it up beforehand. And because it's programmatic, we also have a number of features we can adjust on it. The first thing I want to show you here, we have a bunch of blue things in front of the camera right now. We've got a little blue shiny packet of something. We've got a blue card that has uh, some pictures of maps and whatever on it. And we have two different plastic blue caps. And I'm gonna tell you from my eyeball looking at it, there are a lot of shades of blue here that look very similar. Another thing I wanna point out is this card has some embossed text on it. So the things that are super critical for us right now when we're talking about Lumitrax, this, this lighting that shoots at different angles, is the shiny and the embossed. So I'm going to dive into the tool here. This is the picture that we're looking at. Again, shiny is right here. And you can barely see there's an embossed number on here. Just barely, barely. So I'm going to jump into setting up this image so that you can see what things look like. First of all, I want to give you a demo of what this light looks like when it's circling around. I'm going to put this into a mode where it continuously takes images, and I just slowed the shutter speed way down. So, of course, our image is washed out. It's not giving us anything useful, but I wanted you to be able to see how this lighting changes. If I slow this back down to something that's reasonable, Notice your eyeball cannot tell that it's taking four images at a time, each one of those blinks. I don't even know how well that comes up on the camera, but there's just no way. Your eyeball's not fast enough. I'm going to take that out of continuous run mode, and I want to show you some of the things that we can play with as we set this up to highlight the things that we want. So we can tell this basically what we're looking for. I'm looking for something that's embossed and depressed, looking for something that's raised up, looking for flaws like scratches or dents. I'm just going to, for now, let's say we're looking for an identification with incised depressed features. Click on next. And this does a really cool thing, I think. It shows us a bunch of different settings. Rather than having to click up and down on the settings, we can just look and find the thing that gives us the thing that we really want. We can even zoom in on these. Remember those numbers that you could just hardly even see in the other view. We can see it really well here, again, because it's taking pictures with light from different angles and looking at the differences between those. So looking at these, I'm going to say this center picture looks the best to me. So I'm going to click on Next. And then it's going to give us another option. This is noise reduction. And I think this looks pretty good. We're maybe losing a little bit of that four. What if we want to change this noise cut level to something else? And again, we get really quick feedback, all these different options. Again, that one looks probably the best. It is a little bit noisy in the background. I would bet you an OCR could read through that just fine. And let's just look at it in the other direction. If we're cutting out all the noise, we tend to lose that four a little bit more. So I'm going to say weak is probably best here. 
and we'll select that image because it shows us all of the digits the best. So if I click on done, now we can come back and look at our picture. Notice how clean that is compared to our normal image where you almost can't see those numbers at all. Super, super awesome. I want to point out something else also. We've got this shiny packet. What if we wanted to inspect what's on this packet that's you know not shininess we're not trying to determine if it's smooth we want to determine if it's printed properly or whatever so we already looked at this this is the the shape or the topography image we also have they call it a texture image I don't know if that's a really helpful name for me to fit it into my brain but this is a way of removing the glare so I'm going to switch back and forth between normal and texture here's normal and here's texture. Notice that already got a little bit less, but we can also reduce this even more. If I do that even more, notice I just push that to the very strong. Almost 100% of the glare is gone. We can see this very well now. If I click on done for tuning for that, I might even brighten this image up just a little bit more. Maybe that'll give us a better image of uh, yeah, that's a better image for us to inspect now. And we still have very little glare. I can see just a little bit of residue from it here. And again, we could do this without having to move lights around. We could do this without having to try different kinds of ring lights and back lights and side lights or lighting from different angles. We didn't have to rotate the parts at all. It's all built in, which means we can develop a good application much faster. We can change the application if the product changes or if uh, we have to reconfigure how things are out on the automation. Um, so anyway, we've talked about all the manual ways to do things. You still have to do it manual often, but this is a really great tool. And uh, so thanks for letting me share it with you. Thanks, John. The weather is beautiful here at Brain Machine. Looking at the map, we can see a massive subscriber front coming right through here with a high chance of likes and shares. And I would bet you we'll see some comments in the near future as well. Don't miss the great weather. Click here to keep it coming. Back to you, John.